Hey everyone, it is Saturday, January 14th. The time is a quarter after 5 p.m. and the temperature right now is minus four degrees Celsius. And I am here at Christie Pitts Park, just across the street from Christie Station. There's some people taking what looks like skateboard decks down the hill there. There's Christie Station just across the street. And I can't recall it being relatively light out at this time of day for quite a while. Days have started to get longer and we had an unusually clear day. I imagine it'll be dark by the time I get to my destination. And on that note, for this one, I'll be walking east along Bloor Street West here. And I have a 6 p.m. reservation at 7 West Cafe, which is a restaurant over on Charles Street. should take about 35 minutes or so to get there. So I might be a tad early, but that's okay. This is Christie Street, so this is where Koreatown begins. What I'll do is I'll walk east to Bay Street and I'll head south to Charles and then I'll pop over to 7 West. And I've started going to a Goa salon up in Midtown, one that recently opened there. I think it's related to that one. And this would be my first time walking through Koreatown in 2023. And it looks like Clinton's, which is a staple of this neighborhood. It sprung up a barbecue restaurant on the side, Brian's BBQ. Clinton's did change ownership during the pandemic. And this place is new. C Block Taiwanese Street Bento. building used to be Taco Zell Astor, which is now across the street. There's a KBD place claiming to be the best spa in Toronto. I kind of wanted to walk along the south side of Bloor. Well, this is new too, I think. Cactus Vietnamese tea and coffee. Here's a new spot. And the Poop Cafe has found a new home. There's been lots of changes in just the, the first few blocks of K-Town here. As I was saying, I was thinking of walking along the south side, but there seems to be street parking on that side. The 
which would block the view somewhat. Let's do it anyways, at least for a few blocks. There's PAT, a large Korean supermarket. I definitely prefer heading down to Koreatown if I'm in the mood for Korean than heading up to North York and Willowdale. There's a large concentration of Korean restaurants there as well. In fact, you'll see a number of the same places in both spots. There's a new Korean cafe. Across the street over there used to be a KFC and Taco Bell. And now it's a Mary Brown's Chicken, which I believe is an East Coast based chicken chain that's come to go after Popeyes and Chick fil A. I got up this morning and I checked the temperature. It said it was minus 11 and that was around 9 a.m. So I decided I was just gonna stay inside most of the day. Let's cross back over to the north side of Bloor. And we'll look over towards the sunset. So it is 5.23. I don't think I'm in any danger at all. Being late for my reservation. I've only been to this place once. And that was about six or seven years ago. And what's interesting about Seven West Cafe is that it's 24 hours. They've got a pretty good menu. They have an all day breakfast. A lot of Italian dishes. And my favorite restaurant here, Hankook, is still open. And a new place, their chef Korean Fusion has opened up next to it. It used to be a really fun karaoke place right here that was demolished to make way for the redevelopment of Honest Ed's. There's the restaurant with perhaps the largest menu in Koreatown, Arisu. It's a pretty solid place. It's all decked out in Christmas decorations still. Yeah, so she was like away and 
So from the looks of it, it looks like these will be finished off later this year. Those are rental buildings that are replacing the old Honest Ed's large discount format store. All right, I'll take the bait and cross. And where the green beanery used to be, there seem to be a fat burger. So this is Bathurst, and just north of here is Bathurst Station, and this is the western end of downtown. So I am entering the Annex neighborhood. King street food next to a fry, a jerk king, and a Mr. Tonkatsu, which is quite good. Where that Dollaram is, it used to be a popular record shop that's now just south of Chinatown on Spadina. There used to be a big Korean restaurant where this Popeyes is. And a cafe has returned to this corner. The Dej. Used to be a large second cup just here on the right. And where that is used to be a Starbucks, where that Value Buds cannabis store is. Used to be a very large and busy aroma. And all those cafes were quite busy. As I walk past Lee's Palace on the right. There's Sushi on Blur. I haven't been there since they moved to the new location. It used to be a bit east of here. Yeah, they used to have two floors. This is new. There used to be a pool hall in here. Mezcalero? Doesn't look like it's open yet. I 
just got a notification from Google. I have a reservation coming up at six. There's the Future Bistro, which has an excellent assortment of baked goods. It's been a staple of this neighborhood for quite a while. Speaking of staples, there's where the Brunny used to be. Which quite unpopularly, is that even a word? Turned into a Rexall. And now it's Valley Village. I would like to get rid of any of them. Popular spot to get used books, B and B. There's a Valley Village here. And they have a location in Midtown, just north of Young and Eglinton. And there's another one, just north of Young and Dundas, where the world's largest bookstore used to be. And here's a place I've been meaning to try. That's an Asian-style market. first opened there's quite a big line to get in there I saw Korean and Thai food on offer This is new. I don't think I've seen this lighting on the church before either. It's pretty neat. All right, back to the south side. street is this metro supermarket is going to turn into condos. There'll be a new metro reappearing in the base. Apparently metro owns this land. So some supermarkets have been getting in on the real estate game. Barking German Shepherd. <laughs> that delivery guy. We're just watching that as well.
don't know if it's a good thing that I wasn't on that side of the street or not. Guy doing all the yelling didn't seem like he'd probably <laughs> appreciate some with the camera walking by, anyways. once again. And it looks like the second cup here is closed down as well. Sure, if they're still going at it. Yeah, it's the Dyna Station. It's just a little bit here. This one closed on December 16th, so there used to be three separate cups in the annex. And now there are none. And between here and I want to say Bedford Road, Blair Street gets quite a bit quieter. Those people were clearly crossing against the signal, but at the same time, the driver didn't seem very willing to slow down. And I have recorded some videos before me walking to have dinner in a place just across the street there. It's got Yubi, an excellent all-you-can-eat Japanese barbecue joint. I kind of feel in the mood for that. I don't know if it was the walk through Koreatown or not.
and this is St. George Street. And here's where we'll find St. George Station. There's a look at the Bada Shi Museum. Tower off in the distance. Yeah, it's very, very low. So the area to my right, which is to the south, is mostly the University of Toronto St. George campus. There's Varsity Stadium on the right with the dome over the plane surface. And we haven't had a sky at twilight like this in a while. It's been mostly very gray and gloomy. But when you don't have clouds in the sky, you get this neat glow at this time. That's what it's like to the west. And you can enter the Mercedes Arena just there on the right. And a look into Philosopher's Walk, which will take you down to Hoskin Avenue. There's the ROM on the right.
and we're coming up at Queens Park and University Avenue. It'll be the Yorkville neighborhood. hospitals in the city just off in that direction but nope it is heading west on Blur Street There's a ghost bike for Darcy Allen Shepard. If you Google that name, it'll come across a rather sad story. Looks like some of these high-end retailers are still open. Curious to see what ends up happening with the old pottery barn location here. It's got a very customized facade to it. Someone's either going to have to make that work or take it down at great expense. truck is turning north up the Lair Street and heading into Yorkville Village.
And this would be Bay Street. So I said, I would turn right here and head down to Charles Street. Staying on to Blur Street. There's Italy on the right. I've got time, but it is 6.51. See where those sirens are coming from. There's a lot of emergency vehicles buzzing around tonight. H&M is closing down very soon, and they closed down their Queen West store as well. I think they're just consolidating everything into a monster store they have at the Eaton Center at Young and Dundas. There's a look up at what will soon be one of the two tallest buildings in the country, possibly the tallest. That is one blue arrest. This is Young and Bloor. Pretty sure that was not a proper left turn there. As unless you're an emergency vehicle, you can't turn left at Bloor and Young. So this is south on or <laughs> south on Young Street, but Charles is coming up. <laughs> and Seven West Cafe is pretty much right at Charles. Oh, Young and Charles. is the not-so-Korean grill house, as I like to call it. So I remember going to the location on Queen West a long time ago and ordered a bibimbap. And the guy mixed it in front of me, which is a big no-no in Korea. They were also charging extra for side dishes. And I found out it wasn't actually Korean owned, which kind of made sense. That is very nice. 
necessary. To just stop on the gas like that. And we are at Charles Street and straight ahead is 7 West Cafe. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Starting at Christie Pitts Park in Koreatown and walking east along Bloor Street to Young and then south down to Charles. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below and if you wish to support the channel. There's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description. I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides and a TikTok account there as well. And there is a super thanks button and below these videos if you wish to say thanks that way. Anywho, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Yoink.